First the doctor, now the detective. David Tennant has got it going on right now. Hello once again watchers of Good TV. My name is Nick Pella and this is once again coming from my white room. Now today I'm going to be talking about the show Broadchurch. This is a show which debuted on the BBC back in 2013, and so I'm going to talk about it now, because it's available on Netflix at this moment. So, uh, go check that out if you have not already. So, Broadchurch stars two main people, David Tennant and Olivia Coleman. Uh, they are the two detectives of the case, and the plot of the show surrounds the murder of a young boy, Danny Latimer. And this is the first murder that this town of Broadchurch has had in its history and so it's a very big deal and so detectives David Tennant and Olivia Coleman have to go and figure out who did it and the case goes on for eight episodes takes place over 50 some days and it's it's actually pretty cool David Tennant does kind of the biggest most standout role in this show in my opinion he's the main reason that I decided to watch it in the first place it also got really great reviews so I was really curious to see how this show was David Tennant is really good in the show he's a very cool detective to see he's very realistic he's very hardened very grounded but he does have his own issues which is really neat to see as well he's not just this perfect guy and then surrounded by people with problems he himself has his own problems and so I need to see those unravel Olivia Coleman is kind of this detective who wanted David Tennant's job. He's her superior, and so she's very not liking of him right away. But they do end up having to work together, and so they get used to each other. And it's really interesting to see their relationship fester. Main thing I really do like about the show is that it has a very good mystery. I never knew who the murderer of Danny Latimer was until the very last episode, until they started dropping some hints and you could kind of piece it together before the big reveal. And it's just a very cool way to do it because you keep on guessing as to who the murderer actually is and it's just a very neat way to do a show. I've watched a lot of murder shows or homicide shows before and this is the first one that I've seen that extends through eight episodes and keeps me guessing at every turn as to who the actual killer could be. But as a result of it being eight episodes, it does kind of get a little bit rushed because there's a lot of time jumps that we don't see happening until someone mentions, oh, it's been a month since this happened. Okay, so that was just something which kind of bugged me a few times. It didn't take me out of the show that much, but it did just kind of, it, it, it kind of bugged me a little bit that they couldn't just contain it to like a month of time and had to take it to almost two months of time for the whole show. Another thing that I really do like is that all the main characters that they focus on have really interesting backstories or secrets. There's something behind the character of everyone in this show, from the lady with the dog to the old man in the candy shop. There's just a lot of people in the show which have really interesting histories. And as the show goes on for its eight episodes, it continues to deal with these things and explore them and deal with the, the reaction of individuals as certain secrets come to light without knowing all the facts about those secrets. And it's just really well executed, in my opinion. Again, with that, some characters do end up getting more attention than others. I would have liked to see a little bit more backstory from Danny's mother as opposed to like everyone else in the show because everyone seems to have secrets in this show. There's a couple people that don't apparently have secrets, but secrets are revealed for almost every character. I would just like to see it dealt with more evenly. The show portrays emotion really well as well. When we see the reveal that Danny is the one killed, the reaction of the mother is really, really good. The reaction of a lot of these people to really shocking things is very realistic and very heart-wrenching a lot of times. And my eyes did water. I never cried during this show. I thought I would in the finale, and I should have, but I didn't. And then lastly, there is a very cool twist at the end and big reveal as to who the killer was. It wasn't really anything that was really explored in the show before, so it's just kind of thrown at you. I don't know. So there's not really any big buildup as to who the killer ends up being and the reasons for Danny's death. So that it just seemed kind of thrown at the audience a little bit. Just like, oh, this is why. Forget everything else. That I didn't really like as much, but I thought the the reveal of who the actual killer was and the portrayal of that individual before and after 
they are discovered is also really, really well done. Those are my thoughts on Broadchurch. It's definitely worth checking out. It'll be a great mystery. It's only eight episodes, 40 some minutes long. So it's really easy to get through. I watched it over the course of three days and it kept me really entertained. Every episode ends in a cliffhanger that you wanna keep watching the next episode to see what happens next. It's just a very, very good show. It's been confirmed for a second season. I have no idea when that will debut, but I will definitely review it when it does air. So, those are my thoughts. Leave yours in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Did you like the show as much as I did? Did you hate it more than I did? Let me know. Like, fair, comment, and subscribe once again if you so choose. I'd appreciate it immensely. And as always, my people, my name is Nick Pell. And once again, keep on watching.